Hey everybody, welcome back to the fish room. Nice to see you again. And we are in the fish room and I'm going to do some jobs. It occurred to me that Mega Tank, which is the tank that I've been going on about for so long, still holding water, touch everything. Um, it's doing great, but it occurred to me the different tools that I need for an aquarium of that size. So if you're thinking about getting a bigger aquarium, your normal aquarium tools for your normal aquarium job just aren't going to cut it. So I just thought I'll do a quick video and take you through some of the things that we've got. For instance, if I want to catch a fish in one of my smaller tanks like these ones over here, you might use a net like that or maybe you can scale it up to a slightly bigger one. Mega tank, I use this. <laughs> so that's the kind of thing that we're talking about. Everything's the same thing, you just need bigger. So nets. And when I might use a algae scraper like this, a little sponge on a stick to get in and get all the algae off. Mega tank gets a mop. I actually really like this thing, it's brilliant. It's obviously a floor mop. And you need to be careful, you're not going to get something that's going to scratch anything properly, but this is a nice changeable sponge on the end. You do get some that have like medications and things like that, antibacterial stuff built in, but you just want a normal sponge and you can get in. And so as I don't drop water everywhere, once I've scraped Mega Tank down, you can get a good squeeze out. I don't know why that pleases me so much, but it does. Even food's on a different level. You need some tweezers to get fine things out the bottom of the tank. Mega Tank. Needs one of these. So while most things are just, you need a bigger version of the thing, if you're going to have a bigger tank, stick a pole on the end, it'll work just as well. Sometimes you need to make a few little unique refinements. Water changes provide their own special problem for Mega Tank. If I'm just wanting to do a big water change, I will literally just get a big hose, drop one end in the tank, walk out there and leave the other end down the driveway and get empty out the water that way. But if I want to specifically clean the tank, it might be some uneaten food or a big pile of poo, lovely things like that we have to deal with. In my normal tanks, I would use my gravel vac or something like that, which I can't actually find at the minute. But I've made this kind of quick change attachment deal where I can drop this into the tank, squish it around, pick up what I need to pick up, and the other end goes into my drain. Uh, and I can go around and I can pick up whatever I want in all the tanks. But that one doesn't reach mega tank. This is only, this is built for these tanks it's a certain height that can get in easily and move around easily. This doesn't reach the bottom of Mega Tank. it's three feet deep, it doesn't reach the back of Mega Tank. it's four feet wide. We need a new solution. So I like the principle of this, I've been using it for years and it works really well. So I'm going to make a new one. So I've cut down a piece of pipe. For this stuff I've just got, it's, it is water pipe I think, um, but it's just from B&Q, a couple of quid for a big long stretch. If you have a fish room, invest in one of these things. These are fantastic. And rather than sitting with a saw, <laughs> you just go in, get it in to the size you want. And for this particular cut, I just want a little bit off the end. And you can just literally cut and done. So what I'm going to use is a length of pipe, this size, this size, and an elbow. I'm literally going to put them together like so. So this gives me my handle, if you like, so I can get into Mega Tank. I can aim it wherever I want, and then on this end we attach a hose. So all I need to do is just quickly glue these together and tool made. It's a top tip in under 10 seconds. Should do a series like that maybe. Don't really need to glue these because there's no pressure or anything like that under it. It's just a just a nice to have, and I've got the the cement here. I might as well use it. It smells delightful. So one end on like that, put the other end in there. Ten seconds and it's it's job done. Um, the next bit, next part of this is finding a piece of pipe of a suitable size. Not always available, but when you have a fish room for a few years, you tend to amass these things. So I've just got some clear pipe like this, uh, and I'm going to use a push fit. If you can see very clearly there. It's exactly the same size as this. But what I like to do is to heat up this, let's it expand a little bit more. I can push it onto the end of the pipe and then as it cools it contracts and just really grips it. Nothing better for that than boiling a kettle, some hot water, dipping it in and attaching it. So I shall do that off camera and come back and show you. Get your boiling water in a mug. I have actually seen people do this with an actual cup of tea which I'm not that gross and I don't like tea that much. Dip it in, 
just hold it for like maybe five to ten seconds get a bit soft soft enough that it's pliable basically you should be able to tell by feel it's not rocket science give it a little bit of a waft and it is a fuel thing because if you go too far sometimes it can be too pliable and then you can't get enough pressure to get it in but you just want to get it really good enough that you can get it over come on Graham, you're on camera, you can do this there we go so as you can see it gets it over just push it on as much as I can it doesn't need much because when it cools it grips really quite well job done Ideally, I could get that a little bit more, but it's fine as it is. And I now have my DIY gravel spot back. And for my regular viewers, if you remember the last video, I talked about these tanks and how there used to be a gold SOM in this tank, which has gone missing. Found them down here in that corner. I don't quite know how he got there. That had a lid on it and two other, these two bags were sat on top of it. Since we're in the fish room, um, I asked about my Oscar tank. I've got three Oscars and a, a Severum in this tank and they were just really skittish in the last video I asked of any ideas. The three main ideas were put the tank higher up. Can't do that one. I don't have any tanks big enough that are higher up so maybe that's more of a long term thing. Put in some floating plants, so we've put in a whole bunch of floating plants um, and give it some more hides, put in a few more caves and change the substrate to a lighter substrate. I haven't gone to that far, but I've put in some caves, I've put in some floating plants. They're hiding now because I'm standing right next to the tank, but they have been out more and more. They're a little bit beat up still, but I'm hoping that now I get to spend more time here, they get a bit more used to me. We're on the up, so thank you for that everyone. Also in the last video I tried to show you my new bucktooth tetras and tell you how terrible and frightening they were and then they all got scared by a worm. So I'll try again, give them a little bit of a, a feed. This time of some vibrabites, which can imitate some bloodworms. They usually like these. Well, maybe they just don't like being filmed. <laughs> Every time I've fed them, they've gone mad, swarmed, a little bit like that, but like 10 times that. Ah, they are in the middle of a water change and I'm stood, stood in front of the tank, maybe I'm just putting them off. But these are really interesting fish, I can't wait to get a big tank set up for them and show you them properly. So I've got my little corner over here where I keep my mega sized tool for mega tank. And um, once you've got the right tools and if you've made them, it's no more difficult or arduous than any other cleaning or maintenance operation. Literally, if I want to suck out some poop or some uneaten food or whatever it might be, we drop it in, get a siphon going. There are a million ways to do this depending on how you like to do it. I go for the old swallow a gob full of mucky water. Stick it in the drain and we're away and we're cleaning and I can pick up the poops and all the nastiness and keep it good. A bit cloudy at the moment because I've added some sand and it wasn't quite as washed as I thought it was but that'll clear up in a day or two and then we'll be back to enjoying the hobby again. So as well as the big tanks, the little tanks need their little bit of love. I've cleared out a load of extra plants in this tank and it just looks so much better. This is the Rainbows and Cory's tank. Fantastic. Um, it's just so lush. I've, I talked about this in previous videos, how it was overgrown on the top with these salvinias. I've, I've cleared that out so the light's coming through like a kind of mottled light. And I just, I love the look of this now. And you can see the fish a lot more better, which is good. But so lush and algae free which is a benefit of these floating plants. So floating plants for the win. Anyway, just thought I'd take you along on the journey of some of the little maintenance, little and big maintenance tasks that I needed to do. If you like this kind of thing or you want to see more tanks, let me know down in the comments what you want to see. Always happy to show you what's going on around here. If you're watching this in the day it comes out and if I get 
it done quick enough. Tomorrow will be my 100th live stream, so there might be some fun in games and giveaways. Come along to that 9pm UK time. But other than that, thank you for joining me, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!